Howdy folks, in this video we're going to be looking at taking summarized 445 calendar tables and turning them into usable 445 calendar tables. So wait, what do I mean by a summarized 445 calendar table? Well, a summarized 445 calendar table, or any really summarized calendar table really, is going to look something like this, right? So we've got, uh, we say, hey, can we get the calendar table? And they say, sure, here's the calendar table. And we get a table that looks like this. But if you'll notice, um, this isn't one row per day, which is what you want from a calendar table. This is one row per period or per month. And what it says is, all right, well, here's where that period starts and here's where it ends. This is something you'll see uh, very common in your, if you're dealing with um, you know, uh, folks that use 445 calendars. Uh, the problem is, is that you can't use this in Power BI, right? You need in Power BI, you want to have a calendar table that has one row per day. So we have to turn this into that. Not too hard, though. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. So to start off with, um, we're going to go ahead and head up here to Add Columns. And we're going to add a custom column. And what we're going to end up doing, uh, just to sort of cut ahead a little bit, is we're going to create a list that has all of these days in it. right? We're going to create a custom column that has a structured object in it. It's got a list. It's got uh, however many days are in here and those days. And then we're going to blow it up. But to do that, or to blow it out, but to do that, we have to first get the number of days, and we're going to do this piecemeal. You could squeeze all this into a single step, but I'm going to do it piece by piece to make it a little easier to follow along. So first thing we need is the number of days between the end and the start. So I'm just going to call this days, or maybe I'll call it period duration to be a little more specific. All right, okay, and this is going to be, we're going to take the, we're going to take the end, and we're going to subtract the start. Okay. Now, uh, if we go ahead and hit OK, we're going to get um, something that looks a little bit funny, right? We're going to get this duration value here, right? Because both of these are sort of uh, date values. So when you do math on them, you end up getting this duration value, which is not what we want. So what we have to do is convert that to a number. Is that really hard? No, nah, it's pretty easy. Watch this. Number dot from. Number dot from. Take that duration and turn it into a number. Okay, sweet. Hey, that looks a lot better, except, oh boy, these 27 days, 34 days, that looks wrong. That's because we're off by one. This is sort of a classic fence post problem. All we have to do is go back here into our formula. By the way, I did that a little quick. Go to our formula, click on the little gear icon, and go either at the beginning or the front, and we just add one to the whole thing. Okay? Fix our fence post problem. Boom. Okay, so this period's got 28 days, 28 days, 35 days. 28, 28, 35. Hey, classic 445 calendar. So let's uh, create our next custom column. We're going to create a custom column that's got a list that's got all these days in it. So we're going to go to custom column, and we're going to call this uh, date, just thinking ahead. And so this is going to be a list dot dates. We're going to generate a list of dates. Well, what's the first date? Well, the first date is uh, the start date of the period. Well, how many days? do we want to have in this list? Well, we just got that. It's the period duration. It's the number of days. Oh, cool. Well, what should be the uh, the distance between each item in the list? Should it be one day, seven days, 28 days? Well, we just want one day. But we have to do this as a duration, because that's how it thinks about it. So we're going to do pound symbol, duration, all lowercase. The D is lowercase. And we're going to do one day, zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. Close that out. And we're now going to close out the list.dates function, and we're going to click OK. Boom, now we've got a list of dates, right? So for this, we can see, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, don't do this, right? I just want you to see this. I'm going to go ahead and drill in on this one list here. We're going to expand all of them. But let's just drill in on one to see what it looks like. Keep in mind, this period starts from 1230 and goes to 126. So if we drill in by clicking not over here for the preview, but on the actual link itself, we say, hey, we get all those days from the 30th through the, oops, through the 26th, right? Let's see, make sure we got that right. 30 through the 26th, perfect. So now all we have to do, now that we remove that step by clicking on the little X right there, we just have to click on the little rabbit ears here to expand this list out. And what it's going to do is it's going to create, um, well, in this case, 28 new rows, one for each item in this list that's got all this data associated with it. And then for this list, it's going to create 28 new rows, one with all this, uh, with each one of these items over here on in these columns. Right, so it's going to sort of, you know, uh, expand it out like an accordion, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so let's go ahead um, and keep in mind, right? So just think, right now this is 1230 to 126. Right, that's one row. When we blow it out, 
expand new rows. Boom. Now we've got 28 rows associated with that, right? All 28 rows. Boom. Okay. Uh, and at this point, it's just cleanup because now we've got one day uh, for each row, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, some people like to keep the start, end, and duration uh, columns. I'm just going to get rid of them for now just to clean this up a little bit, make it a little easier to see what we're doing. So I'm going to click on period duration, shift click on start, whoop, right click, and remove these columns. And maybe I'm going to move the date to be the first item, in, or to the first column in the table, make it a little easier to look at. And let's recast this as a date. I'm going to click on the little ABC123 icon, click on date. And boom, there you go. From here, you would probably want to, uh, you know, exp uh, enhance this calendar table so that you can do things like, oh, I don't know, uh, click on date and say, hey, I'm going to add, uh, gosh, I guess the the month and maybe uh, maybe the name of the month and things like that. But uh, really, the hard work the hard work is done. Whoops, the hard work is done at this point when we've used that uh, table or the list dot dates function to create uh, this cool table right here. Okay, well I do hope that was helpful and I will see you next video.